So hey guys, welcome to my first ever sketchbook rambles. Well, I guess that's not entirely true. I technically recorded audio for one in advance and I had planned on like finally doing it. Um, fun fact about me, uh, I have some sort of like sensory issue. I don't know what it is and I haven't been properly diagnosed, but like all of my friends say I have it. After doing research, I believe I have it. I'm not trying to self-diagnose or anything here. But I have a really bad habit multitasking with certain things. And that mostly is when I want to talk about something, like a topic or whatever, I can't also be drawing. I can do it when I'm, like, talking with somebody else because then I can, like, take breaks. You know, I can, like pause a thing and, 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 and focus my thought. But if I'm having a very like in-depth conversation or a very focus driven conversation, if you guys uh, don't know and you're new here, I tend to ramble a lot. I say, um, uh, a lot and I pause a lot. I actually edit quite a few out. I know it might sound crazy, but I, I do. And I do because like when I have those conversations with people, there are moments where I literally just, I just blank because there's too much going on at one time and it's, it's too much for my senses. And the same thing happens whenever I like go to a party or I'm playing with friends. And if there's like music with lyrics in the background, it's so hard for me to focus on a conversation because I'm focusing on the music. Or if too many people are talking at once, I get overwhelmed and it like, I just shut down and I know that's weird, but that's why, sadly, unlike most sketchbook rambles, because when I see sketchbook rambles, you know, it's drawing, real time, talking, real time, and I personally, I, while I do like those videos, I almost never watch them, because they sort of have the same issue I do, where they pause a lot, and this and that, and so, obviously, there's pauses here and there, you know, there's pauses in my normal speed paints and stuff, but... I want to do this at least once a month to try to, like, get more done in my sketchbooks. Uh, I used to be really, really, really good about sketchbooks. I was finishing them really fast. And then I just slowly pushed away from them. I was, you know, going through some stuff, and it was harder and harder to do it. And I had to focus more and more on work. And then once I got the iPad, pretty much what little sketchbooks I did use... I was bad at it. <laughs> um, it took a lot longer to finish. And so I thought, because I have these markers still, they're not they're not uh, Copics, they're actually Ohuhu's. I do use Copics later in the video. But I want to try to do this also as a way to just kind of like, just talk, talk to you guys, be more of the you in YouTube. I know I do a lot of pinnated pieces and a lot of mouth pieces, but I also do like other things, you know. But what I try not to do to the best of my ability is like talk about my life you know I, I daily vlog here and there but I also don't show a lot of things there's been a lot of things going on and I still can't technically talk about it but this is something I can do as a way to like you know kind of recap you guys on my life because I like listening to those videos like when I hear people do stuff where they like you know just talk about what's kind of going on with them I like listening to those and you know I also like the whole like oh Let's all get our sketchbooks out and let's all doodle while we're talking and, and those sorts of things. Because I, I tend to do that too, though it's mostly work. But uh, I guess I should talk a little bit about the piece. I probably won't do this always in the future, but uh, it's not exactly a piece. These are more so warm-ups. But uh, I've been recently working on a side project to my uh, to Ticks and Turns and Marked that's just a, f a fun little, little uh, side thing that I've kind of wanted to do for a long time and I've had a couple of adoptables that like fit the aesthetic perfectly and I'm gonna tweak a couple things and also you know make my own characters to go alongside it but I wanted to kind of work through that and do a couple of doodles where I was working on characters from that side project and so uh it's I'm not going to announce it right now because I'm still really 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 in the freaking like beta phase it's it's bare bones right now and so there's not much to talk about besides it's about witches and like stereotypical witches not like mages and fantasy magic well i mean there's fantasy magic you get it but you get what i'm saying <laughs> you get what i'm saying but uh yeah so there's that and then let's just talk about what's been going on recently so uh it's the new year <laughs> new year new me not really but there's been a lot of stuff going on with uh, just my life in general and a couple of friends. I, I've, I've again, I've talked about this here and there, not on detail, but 
Uh, I am currently looking for a job, and the reason for that is just it's 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 getting hard out there, guys. And I've always been a person to where I've never shamed people who do the grind. I've had to do it, and I'm going to be doing it again. But I'm also doing it more so for my own mental health. I know it sounds weird, but while we've been we you know we're in our safe place we're in our own place now everything's everything's good um there's been a lot that i've learned about myself this year and i really think that just with how everything's changing and it's changing so drastically i always knew that this was never a stable job but past i i i believe i can say it's not getting in trouble with google but um in 2019, I made half of what I made last year, like full on half. My income was just sliced in half while doing just as much work and, and just as much stuff getting done. And it it was really disheartening and it really sucked, you know, and it's it's had a burden on us financially. And I, I've talked about it here and there, you know, again, people don't like talking about money, but I think it's important to talk about because I see a lot of people who like who are self-employed full-time and they can afford everything on their self-employment. And that's great. But there is a lot of stigma to people who have to like do the grind. People who have to do part-time jobs or, or day jobs to pay for their, you know, their hobbies and stuff. And I've never felt anything wrong with it. I've had people ask me all the time, like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I can't do this. Oh, no, no, no. It, it's fine. It's why I'm looking for work right now. It's, it's not that big a deal. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where like people put so much stress, no one likes working retail, I guess I should say, you know, but a lot of people have to, you know, there's a lot of other jobs out there besides retail that a lot of people don't know about, you know, and that you can do with little to no experience and you still get paid pretty much the same. So you're not dealing with as much stress. And that's when stuff I've been looking into and also knowing your own self-worth when it comes to jobs too. Back when I did do the grind, I am somewhat in a lucky position because I do have this now my side job is art. Um, you know, I have the luxury of, I can be a little picky and I know not everybody has that. And I understand that's a luxury, but, uh, there were a couple of places I actually interviewed for and I found out I'd be getting less than like eight hours a week starting. And that's nothing. That's nothing. And I'm sitting here like, I, no, I'm sorry. You know, have a nice, I was very polite about it, but I was like, oh, I'm sorry. That's not going to work out. I, because that's not even enough money to put gas in my car. And I've had a couple of the places that are like, oh, well, it's just starting out like this. You'll work your way up to other hours. And I'm not exactly in a position to do that. I mean, yeah, some people can be like, oh, well, it's only that much time. But you have to think of like, again, the logistics and a lot of adult stuff to it, you know. Oh, yeah, it's eight hours. And California's minimum wage is, I believe, $11 now. It's supposed to be 15 but it's like depending on the place. And it's $11 now. But we also get a crap ton taken out of our taxes to where realistically that eight hours, I'm not even getting 80. I'm not even getting 80 bucks. And to some people, 80 bucks is a lot of money. But to where I live, it's really not. And, you know, that's that's not even a full thing of groceries for like a few weeks um, with where with where we live. And so it's one of those things where it's like you really have to see what you're doing. And that's why you end up seeing a lot of people working like a lot of jobs or a lot of overtime just to make a decent living, you know. So, um, but, uh, besides the, the money thing, <laughs> um, I've also been stressing out a little bit because my cons coming up anime impulse and I, I did a big oopsie. This, this is all on me and now I'm a little paranoid, um, which also sucks with my money issues, but, uh, I got my seller's permit back in December and I didn't realize that it takes 90 days for it to be mailed to you in California. I assumed it would be mailed to me within like a month and I thought I had enough notice. I was wrong and I need a seller's permit, obviously, to work at the convention. I didn't need one to apply, but I needed one for the convention. So I had to recently shell out <laughs> a lot of money to get an advanced seller's permit to get one mailed to me. And hopefully that comes in time. I'm going to have a digital copy and I've already emailed the admin to be like, hey, is a digital copy okay? And they haven't gotten back to me, but... This is a big oopsie on me. I, I, I've, I've known about Anime Impulse for months. I should have thought farther ahead, but I was stressing out. And this is another reason why I'm actually looking for a job. This goes back into it. I've been stressing out so much lately, and I'm kind of sick of it. I know that sounds like a luxury, but 
I've been stressing out so much that I'm losing so much time. Because when I stress out, I full on like get lapses of memory and I sleep a lot more and uh, it takes a lot longer for me to finish things that shouldn't take that long. And I'll push through it and push through it. But, you know, I'm ending, I'll end up working a a 12 hour work day with everything I have to do and only get maybe two to three hours of work done, like basic, you know, time. And it's not with distractions, just that everything takes longer because I'm stressing out about it. And I don't know if anybody else has that, that same issue like I do, but it's something else that's going on. And then, uh, not so, this isn't bad news, but, uh, what also helped and didn't help was, uh, I had a really great realization about my friends. A lot of last year I was talking about shitty friends because I had a lot of issues with friends last year. But I, for the first time, realistically, I had friends go out of their way to see me. And I know that might not seem like a big deal, but it's a it's a big, big deal for me. Um, my friends, Quan and the Zodiac Lord, came out for New Year's and they stayed with us for about technically two full days but realistically it was four days um and we hung out we we watched shows we all went and watched uh cats oh except cody cody couldn't get out of work but we and we had a fun like mountain trip and sadly i didn't vlog it i was going to and i had plans to but then i was like eh i want to just enjoy my friends and even though in retrospect, we didn't do that much, the fact that my friends flew out here to hang out with me from other states, you know, it it meant a lot. It meant a lot to me because I know that like neither of them have a lot of money either. So it's one of those things where you see where your real friends are and you see where, you know, your loyalties lie. I'm not saying all my friends have to go get plane tickets and go see me. Obvi- I'm, not, I'm not an idiot. But it was the first time I had that happen because growing up, I always had a lot of kids and parents of kids bitch about a 15 minute drive to my house. Obviously, this is before I moved, but I remember they would always bitch that like it was so far because it was 15 minutes and it that it, it, it like stuck a chord with me and it always made me feel like, yeah, you're right. 15 minutes is a long time. I should go to you. And I, and I mean this my whole life. Like this was something my mom would always get irritated at. And when I was a kid, I didn't catch on. I'm just like, no, I'm out of the way. I should go to them. That's how it should be. And, but then as I got to be like older and an adult, and then when I, when I moved for the first time, when we moved out of my parents' house, um, when I lived like 40 minutes away, one way, uh, that was when it really hit me that I was like, 15 minutes is nothing. Why were these people complaining? And it was always really really aggravating like to an extreme degree because I would have people who I'd known for years who I thought were really really close friends who I know didn't have money issues because I do have a couple of friends who had money issues and for them I always gave them a pass it wasn't it wasn't a big deal but they would always message me and they would always be like oh I miss you oh we should hang out oh but you should come to us oh but you're having money issues well you should do better with your money you know oh, you can't afford it anymore. We never hang out anymore. And it turned into this like very one-sided thing to where they would try to make the excuse that it was okay because if we had a birthday party, well then for our birthday, because Cody and I wear birthdays are like in the same month, so we usually do a joint birthday party. Um, Oh yeah, for our birthday, they'll make the trek out there, but they'll make a big deal about it. And again, with a 45 minute drive one way, that made sense. But I remember that happened the same thing when I lived 15 minutes away. And it, 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 it always became an issue with me and it became a big thing that would make me get really, really angry about my friends because I would almost never bitch. I would almost never complain. I would go out there. I would make the effort. I would save to hang out with my friends if I was on a tight budget. I would do that effort, but they would never do that for me. And then here are two friends that literally flew across the country, um, they're from Texas and they both flew across the country to spend New Year's with me and Cody. And that was mind-blowing. That in my 27 years of life, I had friends who were willing to hop on a plane when I had friends that couldn't even bother a 30-minute drive. I had friends who were willing to go to the airport bumfuck early 
because I know Quan got like a really big red eye, so she had been up super duper late just to hang out with us. And I want to do the same for them, and I'm, I'm currently saving up for that. So when the next time we go hang out all together, because we can't all hang out in person, you know, I go to them because you know, they went to me. And like, it was really sad. <laughs> it's like, sounds really depressing, but it like, once they left, I really sat and thought about it. And I was like, is that what real friendship is? Because Cody and I, we've been best friends for years and we've always done things together, but we've also lived together for eight years and we're married, you know? But, well, no, now we've been, we, now we've lived together for like nine years, I think. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's one of those big things where it's one of those realization moments, you know? And then I'll hear stories, because I, oh, it always make me upset. I would hear stories from like other people and other friends who would do the same thing, you know? I, I had friends who... Oh, I lived so far away, but then I, I would see them get a plane ticket to go hang out with a friend of theirs they hadn't seen in a long time, you know, and they do that like every year or, oh, I can't afford a trip to Disney, you know, but they're all going to Disney, but they can't afford a 15 minute drive to go hang out and watch movies, you know, and it was, it was hurtful. It was hurtful, but it was also a really good way for me to start 2020 because my friend group is the smallest it's ever been, pretty much, un except for when I was in elementary school when I only had, like, two friends. But these are the closest friends I've ever had. Um, and it, it means a lot, and it inspires me a lot to to do these things and to, to see that I am important enough that people are willing to come out of their way to come see me. You You have no idea how much that means to me and how great that was to kick off 2020 with a bunch of new friends and friends who came out here to just hang out and veg and we just played like we played card games and we watched oh we watched a show called Dragula on Netflix if you like horror and like makeup competitions good stuff good stuff but uh it's also who a lot of tea a lot of tea but I, I'm, I'm rambling here that's kind of the point of this but it was one of those things where, like, I really sat in retro, like, retrospected, reflected, reflected. I don't know why I said retrospected, reflected. This is the kind of stuff I talk about. Like, I know I keep a couple of those in, but I tend to cut a lot of those out as well when I kind of go off like that. But, yeah, it was it was a big thing. And then, like, I see, like, a, a lot of my online friends. Some who I've still never met, but I've been friends with for years. And we don't even talk that much. But we do enough to keep in contact, to talk, to do these things. When I've got friends who are my real-life friends who literally... I had to always go to them and that's never right. You see that in a relationship too. It's the same thing with friendships. Friendships are a two way street. And here's nothing too. I don't always get along with my friends and my friends don't always get along with me. That's another really important thing that I've learned this year is I used to a long time ago, I used to be a settler with friends because I really wanted friends because I had like none and I, I had, you know, a lot of uh, bullying issues. And so I remember I would, I would push down parts of myself to blindly agree with these people because I wanted them to like me. This is also realistic. The past like five or so years is the first time in my life. I know like five years sounds like a long time and it is, but when you're 27, it's not that long. Um, I really sat back and I was like, yeah, I can have long winded debates with my friends and we're still friends at the end of the day. We can agree with stuff and disagree with stuff. And we're still friends at the end of the day. And I think that's really important to have because I can share my true honest opinions and they can share their true honest opinions with me. And it's a really nice two-way street, you know, instead of it being a one-way. And so that's, that's that's something that I'm happy that's coming into 2020. There's a lot of other good things coming up or, or coming up around. And everyone's like, oh, this is my year. This is my. But I really do think it is. So even though with the stress of the fact that uh, I may or may not be able to go to Anime Impulse, even though I paid for it, which that is going to suck. But also uh, keep in mind, please follow me on my other social medias uh, because... Once the con is done, because Anime Impulse, unless something drastically changes, is going to be the only con I do this year, I'm probably going to do like a mega sale on my store to get rid of a lot of merch. Because um, I'm also making a lot of new merch, and I'm going to have a lot of stickers and stuff on there. So keep a lookout for that. But uh, a couple other things. I guess I should like 
kick off with like some plans I have for the future for some videos I want to do. Uh, I want to get a review type video out finally and not like a product review, not like that, like a review view for either a TV show, a movie or, or a book. Cause I'm like back into reading again. Uh, I've been watching a lot of good stuff and I, I really want to like sit down and do it. The problem is I have to make, I have to make talk sprites <laughs> and like try to find like a good quick way to do talk sprites without it being too annoying. Um, but I want to do that this month. And another thing I really, really want to do this month is I want to try to stream more as long as my computer will will hold out. Um, so to stream more, I have a schedule set up as long as everything works out. A uh, couple, The next couple weeks, though, are going to be just con prep streams, realistically, for the streams I do definitely do. Uh, because, like I said, I got I to gotta get to work on that. And I got to make damn buttons. But uh, another thing, too, is... Do, 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 do. Brain, Brain, why are you farting right now? Please stop. Uh, I had another thing I wanted to do, and I'm trying to remember. Oh, oh, okay, I remember. Uh, I'm trying, keyword is trying to make at least two videos a week um, with my current schedule and everything. So I'm shooting for Wednesdays. They're always going to be talky videos for Wednesdays, either a live stream, topic video, story time, art rambles, Michi rambles, whatever this it's that's going to be stuck for Wednesdays but on Sundays I want to try to do extra videos of like speed paint Sundays or something like that just a little something extra also help with the algorithm because the YouTube algorithm sucks and also something that's that's not too stressful on me you know because I always have backup footage and stuff but that's something else I want to be looking out for also uh I really hate having to plug this stuff I always find it so annoying but because of the issues with my stupid icon and YouTube not getting back to me I feel like I really have to do this so yeah my icon issue still isn't fixed unless you're watching this in the future is uh I guess I should talk about that real quick before I go into my little spiel but I did not change my icon when this happened uh so it wasn't like I went to change it and this glitch happened I was on mobile one day and I saw that my icon was still my icon, but when I commented something, it was those stupid blue boxes. And I was like, huh, that's weird. And I remember making a post about it on my community tab and people were like, yeah, it's just on mobile though. And I was like, okay. But then slowly throughout that day, my icon just started blooping away. And then I was like, okay, that's weird. And so I was like, I'll just give it a day. It should fix itself because I didn't touch my Google Plus account. Didn't fix itself. So I started getting paranoid that my Google Plus account was hacked or my Google account, whatever, even though technically the email I use for this isn't a Google email because I had this account before the Google Plus integration. Thanks, YouTube. But um, I was like, oh, crap, I hope I'm not getting hacked. And I wasn't, thank God. Um, that wasn't the issue. I don't know what the issue is. Some people were saying it was happening to like some Minecraft YouTuber that's really big. And they were saying that it could be like the whole fact that YouTube's like pulling away from Google Plus and like cool, but I really wish they'd get back to me. But hey, I'm a channel with less than like 50k subscribers at the, at the time of making this. So it's not like I can do much about it. Um, but tried emailing them. I've tried doing things. I've tried, I've, I've found like so many videos. I've done like 18 different things. I've like deleted my Google history. I've changed it to a totally different icon. I changed the icon, pers the perspective and, and file size and everything and nothing is working and nothing is changing. And I don't know what to do anymore. I can't tell you how many times I've added Google, uh, added YouTube on Twitter. I've tried sending in forms and nothing and so I'm sorry about the icon thing. I literally can't fix it. I don't know how to fix it. So it's still me. It's just irritating because it's not like I tried to change my icon and then it this happened. It's just just decided to do it on its own. So it's 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 a really aggravating thing on top of like everything else I've been saying. But uh yeah, so because of that you should probably follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm very active there. I also post all my portfolio stuff and all my finished art pieces so you can see them in better detail on DeviantArt. All of my Patreon Patreon patrons for $1 and up get all of my artwork up early. Uh, if you're like $2 and I have other tiers there too. That's not a thing. I don't think it's gonna happen in January, but realistically in February, I'm gonna try to do like a proper Patreon promotion video 
because the one I made a long time ago was out of desperation because I really, a lot of stuff was going on and we were in a very unsafe place and living environment. So I had to just make something really quick to do it. So I want to do like a proper, like, here's my Patreon, here's this. And I also want to do a couple of overhauled things with my Patreon, with my tiers. Um, mostly just with like my names and my icons and stuff. So that's just little things here and there that I want to, I want to, want to work on. And so hopefully that'll come out in February and everything will be good there. And so, yeah, uh, follow me on my social medias, please, because YouTube is dumb and it is all in my link tree link down below. Also, please let me know. Do you guys like the link link tree links or should I go back to my old format of how I had like them like worded out which one was which? Because it's all in my link tree. But uh, just let me know so I can like change it because I, I do listen to feedback. I read comments. I do this and that. I might not comment all the time, but I do do my best to like read things that are going through and, and see people's uh suggestions for things like how another thing uh, someone pointed out and then, and then i promise i'll wrap it up someone pointed out that i guess in some headphones like my audio doesn't work i have no idea how to fix that I, I didn't even know that was a thing i never do my editing with headphones on so i probably should start doing that and learning like audio editing so i do take critiques i do take criticism as long as it's proper critiques and criticism so there's my sing song uh yeah, I make a new video every Wednesday, hopefully every Sunday. Please follow my social media since I said that like 18 times. And as always, guys, I will. See you next time. Bye.